Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. So this is the second part of this video where I am showing you how you can create this awesome solar system with your own in JavaScript. And in the previous video, I have already discussed about the concepts you need to implement this. And today I am going to show you the implementation of all this physics stuff in our JavaScript. Now before, now, before going into the code, I should tell you that I am using a specific framework of JavaScript here which is called as p5.js and which is really an awesome tool for creative coders and uh, if you want to know more about this p5.js then I would highly recommend you to check Daniel Schiffman's channel The Coding Trend in YouTube uh, which actually shares some beautiful stuff on p5.js so the very first thing you need to do for our project you need to download this p5.js and you can uh, you will be downloading this one p5.js and after installing this in your computer uh, you should be able to start coding now here one thing i should mention that you actually can do it without p5.js but in p5.js uh, they provide a beautiful way to uh, work with the canvas element the, H the html canvas element so uh, in for this project p5.js is preferred but you can do this in JavaScript also if you know how to control the HTML canvas with JavaScript pretty fluently now going into the code uh, this is the basic file we will be using for our HTML now I have named this as index.html well I have named it index.html because uh, in github if you want to just live your uh, project then you have to use the index.html file name that's why and this is our uh, broiler prep for HTML and here after downloading the p5.js you have to include the CDNs here to actually be able to use p5.js in your project and after that you have to link two JavaScript files one is sketch.js another is planet.js uh, so these are the two files here that I will be using uh, for this project and in the one file I will be storing some class and other file the main code will be there so uh, you can actually do this in one file only but uh, for a better clarity and better understanding I have separated it in two files and after that I have just uh, used some little bit of styling to make it look better so first I'm going to show you the planets.js file uh, this file basically contains our class called planets and every planet object in our simulation will be an object of this class only okay so this class actually has four parameters x y d and m well uh, x represents the coordinate of x axis and y represent the y coordinate and d actually represents the diameter of this planet object and m represents its mass okay so according to the JavaScript notation, uh, I am using here this notation. So um, I am uh, assigning this dot m is equal to m, and this dot position x in short px uh, is equal to x. This dot py is equal to y, and this dot d is equal to just d. And uh, I am initializing four variables here. The variables are velocity component is s direction velocity component in y direction force component in x direction and force component in y direction please remember that we are dealing with a 2d case so we need to split our vectors into its components that's why i am using the vx and vy and fx and fy so now i am just initializing a, a color well we will be changing this color for every planet so we we actually don't need to worry about this at this moment okay so now I am going to define a function of this class the function I named it as display so from the name it's very clear that it will just display our planet objects so here I have uh, declared stroke weight to be 2 well these are actually uh, the styling portions you can actually do your own stylings by reading the docs so don't worry about stylings too much here just observe the logic I am using here okay so this is also the styling portion and fill also the styling portion and now here we are showing 
the planet objects as circles and you can see this ellipse function actually generates a ellipse and the parameters we are using uh, to define the shape of this ellipse and please see that the first of parameters actually denotes the center point of this ellipse and as I am going to show the objects of my class so we need to use our px and py variables to denote the object center and to make it a circle I am using both the major axis and minor axis as d so this dot d and this dot d actually represents the diameter of the circle and after that I have written a function called attraction by, by the name again you can guess that this function actually calculates the attraction force between the objects and here the function takes an argument other which will be in our case an object so the first thing we need to do in this function is to find the distance between two objects well in p5.js we have a beautiful function called dist dist and here goes four parameters first one first two are denotes the coordinates of the first object and second two denotes the coordinate of the second object and thus we can easily find the distance between two centers and then I am declaring a variable f well f just denotes the magnitude of gravitational force between these two objects and remember that uh, whenever the distance between two objects becomes zero that means if the centers the center of two objects coincides with each other then our formula will give an value which is not a number actually this will tend to infinity and our computer will uh, output it as nan not a number so we are avoiding the case where the distance between two centers is zero so by avoiding this using an if statement we are going to assign the value of this gravitational force between two objects to our f variable and this formula should be familiar to you from the last slide actually this is the Newton's gravita gravitational force and after that we need to calculate the vector projections of f along the two perpendicular axes x and y now for that as I have mentioned previously that we need to find the angle between the force vector and our x-axis now the easiest thing to do is to find it by inverse tangent function and this a tan 2 actually is the inverse tangent function is p5.js so the arguments it takes just two arguments this actually denotes the perpendicular and this actually denotes the base okay so you can see that we are just uh, taking this triangle only let me show you again so this is the perpendicular and this is the base so by applying the inverse tangent function we can find the value of alpha and by using the alpha we can easily find the x there x a component of force and y component of force and that is exactly I have done in the previous cases now here you can see that I am updating the force fx by a plus equal sign so what does it mean well it means that I am adding the current value of force that I have just found to the previous value of force because obviously in every time we need to cumulatively adding the forces that I am getting and after that we have an update function here so in this update function we are actually gonna update our positions now remember as a visual thing we are only seeing the positions right until we don't update the positions we cannot actually see anything happening so we have to update the px variable and py variable now before doing the update of px and py we need to update our velocities also so the velocity update is very simple as I have already mentioned uh, in this formula to update the velocity you need to use this one and this is the current velocity the updated velocity this is the previous velocity and acceleration times t so that is what I have done here this term actually is acceleration because force divided by m and the 
minimum time frame I'm taking in our project is DT and this is a global variable that I will be defining in sketch.js file. So just keep this in back of your mind that this is the smallest time scale that we are going to calculate in our project. Again, we have to update this velocity for two components, X component and Y component. And after doing the velocity update, now we are at a position where we can actually update our positions. So the position update is very simple. We need to add the uh, term VX times DT to our previous velocity that is PX and PY and thus we will be getting the updated center points of our object. So now our planet.js function is ready and we are going towards the sketch.js function. Okay. So to begin with, I am defining an empty array called body. Well, this body will actually contain our objects. In our case, the objects are sun and several planets. And here I am uh, initializing a global variable dt that I have used in the planet.js file also. And, I, and after a little bit of experimentation, I found that uh, three works pretty good. And then I am using another global variable g, which I have also used in our planet.js. Well, in reality, the objects in our solar system are so much apart from each other that we cannot scale them in our computer screen. So we have to take some approximation and we have to lose some accuracy in our relative scaling to observe a beautiful result. N actually denotes the number of bodies in our simulation. I am using only four bodies, so I have initialized N as four. Now this text one and text two are just some uh, information that I will be adding to my background. So you don't need to really worry about these things. And after that, we need to start our setup function. And first I am denoting two variables w and h which will just denote the window width and window height and then i am creating a canvas of w and h now why this thing because i want to have our canvas to fill the entire screen that's why i am doing this after that i am doing a background zero that simply means that our the color of our background will be zero and now we are defining the objects of these classes. Now look, this was our body, the array of objects and the first element I am uh, inserting in that array is a planet object and this new the class name and the parameters is just the JavaScript way of defining objects. And for the first one, I am just placing the sun at the middle of our screen. That's why I have used the W by two and H by two and I am giving it a diameter of 20 and a mass of 1600. Now remember that sun should be of a greater mass than all of these planets because if it does not have the bigger mass then all the other planets won't rotate along uh, around it. And you can see similarly I have also defined uh, three planets or three planets and the and I have varied their positions so that they start from different po uh, positions in the screen. And I have also varied their diameters. One is six, another is five, another is three. And you can also see that I have uh, changed their masses also. Now, after that, I have given them some initial velocity. Now, why we need that? Because if we don't give them a little bit velocity, then they will just fall down on the sun due to its gravitation. So we don't want to let that happen. So we are just giving them some initial velocity. And after that, the animation portion, well, in p5.js, draw function actually continuously getting executed. So we don't need to worry about animation loop here. But if you don't use p5.js then you have to uh, insert some kind of animation loop to it to simulate the effect of moving the planets. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to the background should be that and remember that I have used a little bit of alpha here just to give it a nicer look in the final output we are going to have 
some trails around the planets and this alpha actually makes that possible now these things are just some styling part so i'm not going to go into the details of it so now here comes our for loop where i am displaying every object remember the loop should run four times here because n is equal to four as i have four objects only and by this body i dot display it will just call the function in our planets class and it will just display the object and after that here's the in body problem is actually happening why because in this loop you can see that it is a nested loop and here i am calculating the attraction force between every pair of objects now first uh, i am taking the fx and fy of a body to be zero because uh, you can see that every object will every other object will exert a force on this ith object so to find the resultant force i need to add all the x components of the forces and all the y components of the forces so to start with we have to initialize them. we have to initialize them as zeros okay so there is a second for loop and for a fixed i we are going to loop through every j and if i not equal to j why i not equal to j because uh, the ith object cannot exert any force on the ith object so any every other object will exert a force on the ith object that's why i have given this uh, if statement and if i not equal to j then body i dot attraction body j so let me show you the attraction function again if you have forgotten now let's see here that is just updates the fx and fy in our case it will update the body i fx and body i fy and it will just do every it will just update for every i and after this nested loop we are just going to update the positions now here one thing i should tell you that do not make this update inside here because that will not be a correct solution because then we will be updating the positions before the before updating all the forces so that will just mess up with our whole calculation so the best way to do it first update all the forces by this nested for loop and then update all the positions by this single for loop which will just again iterate through all the i's and just update every object and it will just update the px and py of this objects and uh, remember that draw loop is continuously executing so after the updation of px and py in the next iteration of this draw loop it will just display it with the new px and py so that's how we are going to have the simulation of our solar system and, and the ob and the objects are moving in our screen so now i'm going to show you how it's going to actually look like okay so this is our final project and you can see that we have our planet trails here and this trails uh, are there because of our alpha background if you don't use the alpha then you won't be having the trail and you can actually experiment with the styling by reading the docs and here is the text portion that I have told not to worry about because this is just the styling portion and I think it looks pretty good so this is our solar system we just built it on p5.js and you can obviously build it on JavaScript also and uh, the code for this video uh, will be uh, available in my github repository and i will definitely definitely link that in the description and if you are feeling a little bit more enthusiastic about creative coding and javascript in general then please uh, leave a comment and like and share this video and please subscribe to normalize nerd thanks for watching